the, the analysts were discussing an aggressive trialing. You know, I mentioned to you, it's a little bit risky for VP to do that because they have very level dependent supports. And it looks like for now, they are not showing any indications of going aggressive. Three heroes down towards their side of the map. I mean, their lineup is inherently risky, though. So I think it's, it's fine to do that. You have to play to the strengths of your lineup, and you have to kind of limit the farm of the Shadow Shaman. So all in all, I would say it's a good play. Yeah, we did see DK Phobos make an early TP top, and then Lil as well uh, TP. Actually, I believe it was FNG TP bottom. So they got two wards up in the lanes. They also managed to D ward EG here in the aggressive lane, though. It looks like it will just be Universe solo. I believe they run Sumail on the Slardar once in a while, but uh, generally is Universe. He'll be playing it now. So he heads towards bottom, and he will be up against uh, a dual lane for now, at least, with FNG getting off the creep walk mid. So but we've already seen some TPs out to play some wards, and maybe they don't feel very confident in uh, laning versus a Gyrocopter as a tri lane. Like, that hero is really, really good, but at the same time, they do have Venge plus AA. Uh, so I'm actually a little bit surprised that they didn't run the aggro try. Yeah, I guess they want to focus on getting their early levels and, and the pulls off here. The, both of those supports really do benefit from their level 6. So it leaves DK Phobos in a 2v1 and... You know, actually a lane that has some kill potential if he gets caught by those shackles. The rocket barrage, plenty of follow-up damage. Yeah, but he's not getting anything. And yeah. VP have Just three the heroes shaman's on the bottom lane. Him out. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't need the shackles. That Aether Shock does so much damage at level 1. But Universe, already well on his way to level 2. He's able to hit some creeps at least. He already has one CS. But Darkseer is in, in a world uh -oh. of pain. Oh, takes the rocket barrage here. Doesn't have the surge just yet. In fact, doesn't have a single point of experience. Fear with the Aether Shock gets the first blood. And he G off to a nice start here. They may have gotten dewarded, but they will make up for it and then some. Tough situation for Phobos. The lane not really pushing at all towards him, of course, with the Iron Shell spam. So he's going to struggle here a bit then. It really is. You do not want to rotate one of the supports up there to the lane. That's just going to cost your team so much in the early game. But you also don't want to give Shadow Shaman exactly what he wants in the early game. But now Shadow Shaman has boots and 500 gold. So he can actually get like a really early arcane boots if Phobos uh, leaves him alone. Yeah, and then you look at the other lanes. The, the Dragonite mid, of course, never really going to win his lane. But falling behind a bit early on here to Sumail in terms of CS. Generally what you do expect. And also taking that harassment, Sumail. Fishing for another power shot. That one won't connect. FNG now looking to secure that two-minute room, but interested to see if he does make the journey top. As you mentioned, maybe not ideal, but maybe required with Phobo still level one, only 62 experience, already two minutes in. And Peter has not even had to do anything. He's just been able to <laughs> quietly frostbite some big creeps and get his levels up, get that arcane aura up for his team, and... That Arcane Aura is going to be key for EG to actually put out a lot of pressure in the early game and delay the efficacy of the Ventral Spirit. Yeah, you so want to drag this game out later if you're EG. So far, the Venge for Illidan getting good farm here in the safe lane, but not really able to keep Universe out. So we look at the counterpart to the Darkseer, and Universe, despite the 2v1 that he's had the bottom lane, has really struggled to, uh, has not really struggled the way that uh, we've seen from the off lane here for VP. There's a bit of a wraparound brewing, Lil. Invis was not scouted, did manage to grab the rune, and now looks like he wants to make his move on universe bottom, but... Yeah, but he has to oh, They're gonna yeah, try with the stun here, the follow-up with the Arctic Burn, Splinter Blast coming through, dodges the crush! Well played by Lil, as I'll juke the fish man, and down goes universe, so... Very nice rotation there by BP. Even up the score at 1-1, one to one, but still, he's getting his levels. Phobos, still that 62 experience, that's all he's got. Man, Lil's Winter Wyvern is just ridiculous. Yeah, making plays even before the hero truly comes into his own. Is... I think him and Sonico are the best Winter Wyverns. Yeah, both CIS players. Seen a trend there, perhaps. Very impressive stuff. So, 21 and 4 for Sumail in the mid lane. The Gyrocopter quietly having free farm. And, you know, we talked about how the Venge can rotate early, but Gyro also here that can get involved. Generally not Arteezy's play style, but maybe something that the, the lineup calls for. So, if he wants to play that aggressive TI5 era style gyro still pretty much in vogue you have to could be an option there's this sort of lineup we see g going with an early quelling blade too i'm not sure if that's a common pickup for him but it's a it's a rare thing for dragon knights overall uh, i guess maybe planning on clearing out some stacks later on but not well, something he's not something not they really have right fury. now <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's definitely not building a battle fury uh, i suppose once you get the uh the range for the the level two range for him you can go for those stacks though Let's see now, a haste turn up on FNG. Four heroes. 
congregating mid, but there's a sentry ward here. Fear hanging back. Only level two, but looks like they're going to find their opening. They move in now. Shackle knocked to the ledge, but doesn't seem like they need it as they get off the other shackles and power shot piercing through on G. And all of a sudden, FNG, not like this indeed, my friend, runs right into four. So not managed to cancel the TP in time, and it'll be a wow. twofer here for each. That was actually just a scare tactic by Ancient Apparition. He can't really get a counter kill unless they're like in really deep. They really needed the Winter Wyvern TP, but he doesn't have Cold Embrace, so none of those TPs would have actually worked out for them. But oh. not really uh, scouting out what uh -oh. the starter Bobo is. Surge on cooldown now, and now going to get pummeled by RTZ. Rocket Barrage lays it in, and oh, so much for the aggression early on from VP. It has been all EG all the way. As they continue to mount their offensive here. Smell now grabbing his phase boots, the tower, taking decent chip damage, and the stacking continues in earnest. Meanwhile, for PPD on the Crystal Maid and everything, absolutely everything going EG's way. So well, far. this is kind of why Slar is such a good pick. Like in the offlane, okay, whatever, you get zoned out as long as you have stun. You can do things like this. You just run at heroes, you're kind of like Spirit Breaker 2.0. You're a better version. Yeah, and you can also take the Roche, <laughs> and you've got the uh, more reliable AoE stun to work with as well. So, on the back of that one, Universe, only four and a half. But uh, considering what the Darkseer is, he's still having a great time of it early on here. We'll see and how it's smoke grabbed by the CM. G has died twice. That Radiant is super problematic for VP. He is a hero that you need at level 6 to siege towers constantly. Get that gold up, and without that, they cannot put out any pressure on the map. They cannot invade the jungle to limit Shadow Shaman and Crystal Maiden's farm. They cannot kill Arteezy at all, and... I don't know how they're going to get these uh, T1s down. This is a time of desperation for VP. Not often you say that at the six minute mark in any game. There was, there was a win to line up with their early game, like, like oh, yeah. pretty significantly too. Well, I guess it begs the question, should they have gone aggressive? Should they have put more pressure here? Because the, the way they've set the lanes up does not seem to be working for them. So EG, they're expecting a move. Making a move on top now. They're going to find Arteezy. Can they finish him off? G gets off the stun. There's your Surge into Dragon Tail. Very potent combo. Something we've seen a lot from BG Gaming as well. G gets it done with the Breathe Fire. They've got another Surge and three. They could consider diving for this, but they've got to be worried about potential rotations coming in. They get the stun off now. The double TP. PPD slowly lumbering forward on the Crystal Maiden, but G's tanking in the front lines here. Can they bring him down? There's the Shackle at two. Kept alive by the Cold Brace, but the Dragon's dropping low. Bobo's forced to disengage. G goes in. He does not manage to finish the Domino. FNG, no boots up yet. At the same time, Universe F's still low. Sumail going to work with Focus Fire. He'll bring down the HDF version. There's the slot forward for Milliden, and they return fire as Lil charges forward. A double TP again, it's not four TPs out of the top lane. EG, no, the Shackle denying Burnus Pro. They've overextended, it's gonna be Lil next here. Four heroes go down like a house of cards and Sumail struts all over their corpses on his way back to the fountain. Oh God, what was looking to me a turnaround moment for VP. Just It just took him too long to kill people. The three spawns from EG and, of course, the excellent shackles by Sumail. And it's just, it oh, feels like it's too cool. early to dive for that long. Well, it is if they had the Venger. If they had the Venger earlier, boom, heroes die before they can TB. They just dive, dive in one by one. one. Looking for more FNG. Where are your boots, my friend? You're going to need them. Oh, well, maybe kept alive here by Lil. Good cold embrace. Arteezy force back. Fear. Could potentially be in trouble as well. Slow down more and more. The two ice creatures will finally finish off that shaman, but the creeps counter FNG and will secure the kill. Nothing comes easy for BAT this game. You all at the bottom rune. Engagement breaking out as G gets off the stun in the universe, but he's tanky. But he's going to have the sprint available soon. In fact, he wants to move back in. They're rotating in Sumail. The shackle shot level three available. He might have the angle here. Leads with the power shot. They swap him in. Sumail, oh, he could have had the shackle, but chain stun before he could get off. Ends up getting burst down. VP finally get a big kill. That ends a mega kill streak for Sumail. My this god, he's already got one at eight and a half minutes. They need Illidan here early on in this fight. It's like not only for his Vengeance Zara buff or just clean quick goes like that with the Nether Swap. They have to just rotate around their stun cooldown with the Dragon Tail, with the uh, magic missile and just constantly get more and more kills on EG. You have to prevent them from getting their blink daggers on the Slardar as well as the Shadow Shaman. I'm not sure if Shadow Shaman is actually going blink first, but regardless, you, you need to keep them down. Well, and the big winner here over the past four minutes or so has been Fobo. Suddenly level five, working on the mech. It's not going to be the fastest by any means, but he, he's gotten back in the game then. For a while, it felt like it was going to be a 4v5 matchup as there is a smoke bottom. EG hunting. 
They're gonna drop an Observer Ward here. It's wow. under a Radiant Sentry. FNG expected that smoke. His positioning in the tree line along with the Observer and the Sentry was just perfect to quell that movement from EG. Something you mentioned was the, the Dragonite pressure your tower. Look at this mid tower. It's taken 76 damage. It, basically nothing. <laughs> it's 76. <laughs> My god. I was like, oh, is it like, is it low? It's, yeah, no, no. <laughs> it's taken so much damage then. <laughs> wow. They're gonna move on fear now. He has been caught out suddenly. Lil Man just to hit level 6. He's got the Witcher's Curse and they get the kill. Eladin diving deep wow. for that one. But How did that not deep. hit? If, if we shot that, it would have hit. Uh, I don't think Sumail needs any help with his shackle shots, let's be serious. <laughs> the Wonder Kid gets it done often enough. So they do fight a kill, but can VP transition this into anything more? Can they push the tower? Can they force the objectives? Their they... anti-push is way too strong. Like, call down and, like, power shot, you're going to line up for a shackle at some point, too. There's only so much threat you can have, especially without the DK. He does have his ultimate up right now. Let's right. see if they can... So, acting the Winter's Curse here, though. Call down, uh, baited out very early. We'll kill off the creep wave, but round two of this push. I mean, is it really, stop. really baited out? You you take out one whole wave, and that's like half the cooldown. Dyer's it's not it's not stopping BP. They, they still chip away at Yeah, but tower. look at their other two lanes. The universe, with the help of illusions, will get a lot of damage on the mid tower. Fear, just getting a free level six on the top. BP uh, were supposed to take the tower maybe like two and a half minutes ago. They, they went for the smoke back. BP trying to sneak their way around the tree line. Oh, yeah, I mean, with their line, it's, it's, it's obvious what they're trying to do here. There's no, there's just nobody, nobody home. Mid lane, uh, not really being damaged that much, but being pushed in. The catapult now gets to work. Top lane can be in deny range soon. So a very spread out approach here from EG. They will lose the first tower, but in terms of overall tower health, it, it does feel like it's about equal, if not even favoring EG. So now that they're building mass armor on the side of VP, we see a HOT up on Avenge, along with the Aquila. Then they have the mech coming on the Darkseer, so, you know, trying to gear up for the onslaught of the Wind Ranger plus the Slaughter on top of the Mass Serpent. Radio HOT, Stop. huh? Uh, normally he goes for, like, the early drums I've seen on Illidan. <laughs> The what, HOD uh, is, what do you make of the HOD here? It's pretty good for this line. I think maybe they want to... Mid lane. Moving on G. Looks like the crush is there, and down he goes. So anyway, back to the HOD. The HOD, it might be because their early game was so poorly, they might be looking Radiant for some more stacks in the mid game to help out the DK because like, they are not in the position that they wanted to be in. You'd expect them to be maybe like 3,000 gold ahead at this point if things go about expected for the early game. Instead, they're down in the hole about, uh, about 1,000. So because it doesn't work out, because you've only taken that one T1, because the Slaughter has had like a really fantastic time roaming, you have to go to plan B. Yes, your late game is somewhat subpar compared to EG's. You don't, you know, you, ideally you don't want to position one Venge, especially versus a gyrocopter. Yeah. But you make do with what you have. You come into this sort of lineup, you go all in, and you have to prepare for the contingency. And plan. they do have the big playmaking supports. You hit a big ice blast, maybe you get the Winter's Curse follow-up. Potentially they can take those fights later on with the vacuum as well as they will move on to PPD. They come from above, Lil. We'll finish off the Crystal Maiden with the help of G. So they find another kill, only a Crystal Maiden. And again, the call down being dropped just to clear out the creep waves, but it does seem to be stymieing VP a bit. Uh, all, while that was all happening bottom earlier, uh, the tower was denied by the Ancient Apparition is he, top. Is he so not going to dominate the creep to take anymore? I, I, I theory crafted some uses for the HOD. Some next level uses like using the Helm of the Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, he doesn't it, have one, right? I don't. It is it. useful for armor. I will Dyer's give him that, but that is. Well, then you could just get like a Vlad's or something at that point if you just want the armor. I mean, you help your team. Do the value. Yeah. Uh, Illidan's all about Numero Uno. <laughs> They're moving on mid now, so they'll take the tower here. EG, no real counterplay top lane, but bottom lane Sumail, closing in on the Agonim Scepter, and it's gonna power shot out what. Few little creeps remained of the wave. Oh, are they, they going to force to Roche? Into... This is really bold. If you fight into a Roche pit against Call Down and Surfer, Serpent... okay, Surfer Wars is actually used. They... It's a level six Darks here. They don't have a single point in the vacuum here. The mech's not done yet. I'll actually maybe find on the courier. Indeed, it is. So they're about to get the mech for this one. Oh but... my gosh, this is very risky, Ben. Are they really committing for it? Our Teezy's just waiting, prime to pounce. Finally, there's the Alpha Wolf. So it they does go. take over. Creep power shot coming into the. The pit. Do they want to contest? PPD wants to have a gander, but they're not bringing the shaman just yet. The ward's already committed top, so looks like EG content to just chafe away at BP here, slowly try to whittle them down, but afraid to fully go in. And the mid lane slaughter also on the split push. EG are content to 
not really fighting this one, but just be annoying. And they do get the tier two top for all that. As they the bought so much time. Printed down. Like they bought like ha almost half the half the cooldown on mass serpent wards. Are with, they uh, power shot? Maybe they're they're very down. reluctant here. And EG are if that cooldown comes off cooldown anytime soon, maybe they go back in. But finally, BP back into the pit. They'll grab the ages. Well, they were waiting. They don't want like a power shot steal. That would be really bad. Still, that's two towers for EG. They get the mid tier one. They get the top tier two. Meanwhile, mid lane, there's the swamp, the sun on Arteezy, but Illidan finds himself in the middle of three heroes. Classic Illidan does have the Aegis. Backup is coming. Maybe they get Arteezy. Nope, he just TPs away. So an Aegis expended for essentially nothing there. And that was, uh, yeah, a blink dagger for fear on top of all the tower. It's almost a third tower. The bottom tower was almost killed off by Subel before that happened. So EG not really looking to fight a 5-man unless all their ultimates are up. With, we're talking about like 20 seconds here. But now the Shadow Shaman has really come online. Like, Fear's able to pressure just T3. Yeah, sure, they get a kill on Sumail, but at the end of the day... Oh, uh, he was 30 gold short of the eggs. That's unfortunate. Objective gaming, man. Yeah, space created for Fear. It, it, it's very reminiscent of the way AUI 2000 used to play Shadow Shaman for Cloud9, where he would just constantly be split pushing in the trees, not really coming to fights, but he would get so much farm, he'd get the really fast eggs, and my god, that can be a game-changing item if you get it at a reasonable clip. Oh, they're making a play? Ooh, mm -hmm. that's close. So Slaughter Pink Dagger that has been scouted out, as well as Fear's Blink Dagger, and... Ideally, you, you want to be able to pick up these split posters, so a mobility item like the Blink Dagger or the Shadow Blade is just a complete necessity on, on the Dragon Knight. Unfortunately, he also needs a BKB to deal with Shackle and all the gyros. Damage. I mean, you just look at the items they're building here. They get the Blink Radiant Dagger on the Dragon Knight. H Apparition is just in full-on poverty mode. The guy's on food stamps, for Christ's sake. And your Darkseer is very underleveled. So it's, you mentioned DP not the best natural late game lineup. They're also not getting the farm or the items that let them take it late, particularly. Oh, Probably the Dominator Ven, but it's not like she's using it to actually stack her farm. Time to use Radiant's those Blinks. Four-man smoke at EG's down. Tier 2, heading uphill into the jungle. But look at VP's positioning again. They are ready for the smoke. And they're going to jump universe. There's the stun initiation. Shackle comes through. The call down's there. It's on two. The wall gets dropped, though, and EG are fighting into it. What a curse from Lil! He finds three, but do they have to follow up the war traps there? Finishes off Illidan. PPD able to squirm his way out of this one, and they all managed to hang on. It looked terrible for EG, but they just didn't really have the follow up to that curse. And they had already dropped the wards, so that, that was pretty good. But again, VP are just like extremely prepared for these smokes because their position for them is phenomenal. That foresight from FNG. But the they're not getting team. punished in the end. It's, it's a bit unfortunate, really. I mean, it's still like, okay, well, now where do they have wards? Do they see us smoke? Like, how are they always so prepared? You have to wonder this if you're EG. And I think it's a good move overall from EG just because they do have the better liking. They they can split push, they have better split push, they have better picks, but instead they're going for the unexpected play. VP does not expect this sort of smoke. Arteezy got clipped by the Ice Blast here. I think he makes it out, but he will drop pretty low. Goes back. Already has the BKB now. They do have that Winter's Curse to lock him down, but pretty big spell to expend for the Gyrocopter. The Dragon Knight's a really good frontline tank versus this lineup, though. Especially once he gets his BKB. I mean, he has, like, 20 armor. So Amp's not going to put him in negative territory. And a hero like Gyrocopter, who's built a BKB first, is also not going to be able to put a dent in that. So I kind of like this. And on top of that, they have the defensive swap. Uh -oh. Trying to deward FNG. Throws out a wild ice blast, but that won't amount to much. Ends up going down. Does get the deward, but it cost him his life. So let's see, VP just not able to make a move on the towers, like EG are constantly pressuring their side of the map, they're not trying to trade, instead they're just trying to throw VP off their game, make them squirm around the map and go for objectives that they don't really want to go for, and you know, slow them down by making them not a unit as fun. As five, and they also don't have any vision in their own jungle right now. This is actually a scary time for VP. They have all these aggressive wards poised, but they're not going to be able to get halfway there. It's in fact EG who got the ward down now as they move in on the bottom lane. The sentry ward placed earlier by Lil is out of range. Ice Blast going to connect on two, but they're just not really comboing the Ice Blast. We haven't seen that big vacuum into Curse into an Ice Blast all at once, and as a result, EG, they just keep on punching their way forward. Do VP hold this tower? Do they try? The ward's already planted down. 
400 health, they're gonna try for the side swipe, but of course this is scouted by that fresh landed board, and in goes Universe, finds the jump, it's on Illidan though, very tanky, even with the F damage, the Shackle will connect, do they have to follow up, call down coming through, he can maybe swap himself away towards Freedom, no, he gets put under for now, unable to retreat, the BKB committed by Arteezy, then just swap out by Lil, why don't you take the bullet buddy, secret save, service agent down, and now PPD gets caught up by G, who blinks forward, but it's Arteezy on the back line, finishing off DK Phobos, still G in a bit far, perhaps the illusions coming to support him. He will finish up here. All the while, Sumail chipping and plucking away. In the end, he gets four. Arteezy barely clipped the power shot just off the mark, but Universe is on it. And in the end, EG pull out the five-man wipe. It took forever to kill the Venge, but he died, and eventually the rest all followed. Well, the reason it took them forever is because they were super wary of the positioning Radiant's coming out. Like, they had Arteezy ball. way up out in front with his BKB on, and then everyone else was split up so they couldn't get caught by even a two-man's winner's curse, I think, at that point. So, EG playing it slow, playing it safe, and they have survived the early game against VP. They are in position to take Roshan number two. They have deep ward set up. They are in a very commanding lead. At this point, VP going to have to pull some moves out of their arsenal to take this one away from EG's feet. Ben, are you regretting your prediction yet? Yes. <laughs> I thought they were going to aggro. I thought the early game was going to be better. I didn't think Shadow Shaman was going to be this successful. We're going to have we're going to need to have stakes here for the the consistent failures when it comes to the predictions. We'll talk about that after this. At game. least I chose a side. <laughs> At least you took for something. Don't forget, guys. The panel they said nothing. We got the bold moves here, well, even if they're wrong. But EG now, with that advantage, up to about 4,000 gold on the dire side. Rex Roshan coming back in a couple minutes. So we watch Fear calmly play out the game. They do have the advantage. It feels like they also have the late game with this dirt poor Ancient Apparition. The Venge carry that just can't easily keep up in terms of flash farm. And Sumail, of course, coming into his own now. Has the Ags on top of that, 2,100 gold pocket it as well. We'll see what that next big damage item is. But eventually he's gonna get to the point where even the DK won't be able to stand up against him. It seems like all the VP all of VP's games that I cast where they run a position one Venge just like fail. <laughs> I was, I've I know that they, they win with they're it. They're three and five with it, I believe, coming into this game. I think I've cast like three of those and it's been it's been all losses. So my sample size has been like, why do they keep picking it? Everyone that I've cast they've <laughs> lost. They have a zero percent win rate when they pick carry Venge and I'm casting, but you know, maybe I'm just jinxing it. But it's, it. it's, it's risky, and you, you cannot be this far behind in the mid-game. Yeah, I mean, you think about what the hero brings to the team. It's single target. It doesn't flash farm. As a main carry, it doesn't really scale that well. It obviously makes your other carry a lot stronger, but the other carry is a Dragonite, a hero that's never going to dominate the lane. They did it. They also didn't prioritize trying to stack or play that, like, economy game. Yeah, I thought, I thought they were going to switch, but no, they're all, they're all in on this. They're committing. VP are nothing if not... Oh, committed to the whole movement. EG pushing up in the mid lane four. Pressuring the tower. Meanwhile, VP Radiant's split pushing, still looking for the tier one top. Actually surprising to see it still up, but it's EG with the faster push, the shaman, as well as the focus fire, easily bringing down this tower mid Sumail. Getting that blink dagger, so even more initiation and mobility for him. The Sardar four staff comes out now. EG just ramping up the mobility in general. His nice blast will fly out here. Meanwhile. Just call down in the waves constantly. The game plan is clear at this point. EG, they just want to play the economy game. They want to trade farm. They are in no hurry to try to close this one out. In hindsight, though, PPD's draft was actually quite excellent because he knew that VP were going to five man a lot. So what you need is a mix of wave clear and team fight. The wave clear coming out from Ventral Spirit, or sorry, the Wind Ranger, as well as maybe like a Crystal Nova from uh, Crystal Maiden. You need a mix of team fight. That's where the Gyrocopter and the Shadow Shaman comes in. And of course, you need to win your lane. RTZ going Hello, RTZ, directly on top of the wall. Gets back back. He's probably not even going to bother with the BKB here. Wouldn't have helped him. And down he goes. A nice pick. It does end the dominating streak, but also feels like they need more of that if they want to keep up with EG. Yeah, EG has the tools necessary, like the, the CM for an early game, and of course the Gyro and the Wind Ranger uh, for the late game, and then of course the team fight uh, for the mid game. So all in all, VP, they still have to pull some shenanigans. Ideally be able to take down the Roshan number two, but slowly but surely the Ventral Spirit is starting to taper off, and VP's not going to like that one bit. Yeah, I mean, you look at the item progression here in Illidan, he's fallen behind three of the other cores, including his own Dragonite. It, it just oh, speaks this, to the nature of the hero. This Observer Ward has just killed them twice, though. Yeah, they're gonna find it now. 
but still, VP scouted out in their movements. And it's given a lot of freedom here. Spear confidently blinks in bottom. He's also picked up a four step. The man is practically even with the carry venge at this point. Sitting, and he's one in four, mind you. It's not like he's getting a lot of kills, but he just keeps on farming. Already up to 79 CS and what, three towers at this point, perhaps? Yep, they, they really can't push out the lanes. Well, for, for now, EG, it seems like they want that Aegis spin, and they also just respect VP's high ground. Sure, maybe they're, they're looking like they have the weaker late game, but you go into the blink vacuum curse. If the AI Ice Blast is there, things could get ugly real There's quickly. There's no need to push high ground. They have better late game. Yeah. Right? So they, and, they, and they recognize they that. They just need to wait. They, they win one more team fight. They take Aegis, and then after that, you feel comfortable. You can take more risk. You can, you know, split push out. Oh, if they're over here, we can, like, use the Aegis and whatnot. But until then, you play a really tight ship. You have all your teammates together so that, you know, Slaughter can help if someone else gets jumped. Gyro can jump down his call down in case, uh, you know, Slaughter gets jumped. They're in a pretty good position right now. Well, they saw the Ice Blast, and immediately that's the cue to jump. EG getting the F damage up the Roche, probably dropping in under 10 seconds, or roughly around that amount as he quickly falls ill at him. He's going in for this. He's going to commit the Wave of Terror. Oh, it's too late, and now the turnaround. Call down. Zoning everyone back, even though it doesn't really connect. Illidan turns, gets up the stun. There's the curse on two. This could be an okay fight for VP as they search forward onto Sumail, but he's the Aegis carrier. So drop Phobos as well. Three down. Looks like it's about to be four. G trying to man fight the world, but eventually the dragon crashes down to Earth and into rockets. In a hail of bullets, he too will fall. Four for nil. And they got the Aegis as well as the Roche kill, I believe. Did have to buy back there on the Crystal Bay. It's actually four for one, but still. Big win there for EG. EG has been so proactive this game in, in what they've done in terms of just like pressuring VP from the get-go, forcing the Venge to come to them because like their mid lane is losing out so hard due to slaughter ganks. Uh, you know, blinking into Roche, making VP fight into the Roche pit, as opposed to what happened the very first time, the Aggrefs of Smokes, when they have the better late game. And Overall, the strategic maneuvers this entire game has just been one step ahead of Virtus Pro. It, it really feels like they had a very clear game plan. Very early, they started with the split push. It wasn't like, oh, we're losing. Okay, now let's change up our game plan. It was They had it from the beginning. They stuck to it with the economy game. The Crystal Maiden was never pressured in the jungle. It's generally not a hero you worry about farming, but it just freed up the lanes for the other heroes, and mm. EG took full advantage. Well, Ben... Where do they go from here? When is that magical time where EG look to break the base? They're about to get a Desolator on Wind Ranger now. Is this go time? Or is this nah, farm you time? Okay, you see what VP does. If they split push, you gank them with blinks. If they five man, you split push and wait for them to mess up and eventually realize that they're getting out farmed and then split push and then gank them. So you pretty much wait for a kill or two unless you want to wait for the third rush, but you know, that's in 10 minutes time. So. You play it by ear at this point, you're very comfortable with your lead, you you force the enemies to get BKBs, which is great. You focus fire, you amp, you drop your Shadow Shaman uh, wards, you right click war with Gyrocopter, like they are, they are going to win the BKB wars. So you're, again, you're not worried at all. They definitely don't seem like they have any sense of urgency, it's, it's rather VP are grouping up now. Yeah. It's five, EG's they drop a sentry. smoke though, look at... Peter's vision. He like dropping reserve rewards, trying to hide in the trees to pop the smoke, and that's one of the ways VP can get can get back into the game. It's like a chain feed because they have like really low cooldown stun. So you blink stun one, hope someone else comes and try and helps them out, and you know get one, two, three, four kills that way. And then ideally that'd be around like the third roche timing, but you know you take what you can get. Well, now they mosey towards top. They drop that sentry, I think, hoping to find an aggressive EG ward. Didn't find it. And on the back of that, maybe reluctant to smoke, but EG have no such qualms as they march down into the river. Two minutes to go here on the Aegis. They're going to rotate towards mid now. Lanes are about at equilibrium, directly, diagonally across the river. EG... You know, too many heroes have been missing forward. on the map right now. They have to be prepared for this. If they lose this fight, it is almost game over. FNG could get caught out here. They're coming in, looking. The smoke's about to break. Do they find them? No, oh, they do, but everybody pops their BKBs in time. They burst down Universe, killing him off the bat. That could be huge for VP. Now turning their attention towards Arteezy, Illidan, and G, trying to beat him down on their own, and they will commit a curse here as well. Arteezy's down. This could be the fight for VP. Three, make it four. It's all up to Sumail, and 
Yeah. Well, he's trying. He's still got the just the desolator not yet complete, and he says, "Screw it, man. I'm out. See you later." Where is he going? He might die twice here. TP after TP, stalking him and hounding him as well as the wyvern. Two male is dead at the enemy tier four. He might well die a second time. Good luck getting out of here, Sumail. You're the wonder kid, but you're not that wonderful. Down he goes again. A full five-man wipeout. Wow, that was back then. Yes, attack. after that, certainly. You do not expect a five-man smoke with the Aegis to go that poorly for you, but they actually didn't have the right heroes going at the same time. Slaughter blinked into two BKBs, and then they had the Wind Ranger isolated, but she's the one with the Aegis. You want her to go in first, get a shackle, and then Dying nail one or two heroes right off, the spot, right off the spot. But what ended up happening was the fight was so split up, the supports were able to utilize these trees in the left side, and just no one was able to who actually kill anyone on EG. That's crazy. That was a 6,300 gold swing. Wow. And that is basically the entire lead. Just destroyed in a matter of oh, I, they they probably didn't expect the bkv up on ventral spear i think that was actually like they blinked in on her on her they tried to stun her the bk her bkb came up and then they're like oh crap what do we do now it, it was also nighttime and I, they didn't see the two heroes to the south which were the easier kills uh so they ended up jumping to the north instead and those uh, were the bkb heroes what an incredible 5 vp again their smoke anticipation has been on point this game my god and now they they feel confident enough to pick up a gem on AA, secure them some more map control, and yeah, they're right back in this game after that. All of a sudden, they picked up a gem here in the Ancient Apparition. Ice Blast oh is going to scout out fear. God. Ah, you sneaky little bugger. Take that. G will bring him down. Another pick as the momentum just continues to slowly shift. Well, rapidly at first, and now just continuing to trickle up Yeah, EG the has, has no wars around the map. You know, they desperately need the Slaughter BKB. That's, yeah, that, to they, me, is a really totally do. different fight if he has it. I can see how the support staff like, can be pretty useful versus like their mass stuns, especially like the DK long duration stun, but you have to get a BKB. If you blink and they BKB on your initiation, your Slaughter is instantly gone from the fight. And they all of a sudden have an Assault Caress now complete, an additional plate mail here for Phobos, probably building towards that Shiva's guard. We'll They're see. missing a uh, solar. They really need a solar on the side of VP. Yeah. Because they have so much single target from EG. Solar would be incredibly good for them. Actually, a bit surprised they don't have one, but yeah, definitely I mean, something they'll be building towards at some point is, oh, Arteezy, he's got a BKB here, but they have the Winter's Curse available if he tries to get away as well as the swap, they'll swap him back in, Arteezy fighting against the world on his own, and down he goes again, VP, where earlier the ganks all failed, now they succeed time and again. This game is not only even, but it's about to be a VP game the way it's headed. Wow, all it took was like one more fight, I think, from EG to, to seal the deal, but... <laughs> it's just the man, nature so. of their team fight. They're such a they're such a scary five man lineup if they get the right the right initiation. Finally Sumail gets the Deso. Man, he's really slowed down. He needs BKB. They have stuns. They have a lot of stuns. And they have what, like to me, one of the scariest things in the game, which is the dra oh, Dragonite jumping on top lane. It's going to find out Universe here. Ice Blast coming through hot. And will connect Universe. Kited for days and nights and will drop as well. Slardar, does he have the buyback available? He does not bend. Only about 80 gold short, but dead for 50. That's going to cost for the tier 2, if not more. Let's see, the Roche Timer is going to be really important here. If they can do it before the Slaughter respawns, that's going to be huge. Maybe they can actually force out a ward, ideally, I would think, from the Shadow Shaman on the high ground. But, okay, where's this creep? Where's that HOD creep? <laughs> uh, I don't know if he has one up right now. Not seeing anything on the mini-map here. Yeah. Instead, VP are going to check out the Ancients. Let's see how long it will be until Roshan respawns. About to hit the minimum threshold. But could still be a while. And interestingly, it looks like our Darkseer, not going Shiva's here, but... Oh, the fake the back help. from VP. EG has no vision inside the pit. They have no idea that VP is not there. But EG are just terrified without their precious Slardar. Yeah, but they're like, well, if Roshan responds, we're just going to have to give it up for free. And this age is cheese. And then we're going to be forced to use our buybacks. This this kind of psychology might force them into a poor maneuver of just checking the Roche pit. Like, so we have to fight them there. And they have no smokes available for five minutes. Not to mention, as you said, they're in the dark. Time to just huddle up in the base and pray for the sunshine to break. The one thing that's going EG's way right now is that the lanes aren't pushed 
aren't pushed out, so it's very obvious that VP are kind of waiting up this hill. VP could play this waiting game. They cannot leave the rush pit for that long because EG can also just smoke in and, you know, amp and then drop boards and Roshan is down and they get the HSG. So VP, hey, they have to retain control of this area. Oh. Take down this T2, control the secret shop. Sumail's got to be careful here. They've got the surge into the Dragonite blink. They also have the swap available. He will sit all the way back perched on the ramp, the bottom lane, but this means VP take a freebie. Roshan looks like, oh, just about exactly a minute out now. Oh, that's almost an MKB up on G. That's that's also really bad for Sumail, because Sumail does not have, like, if he blinks in his shackles and gets BKB, he is dead, win run or not, once that happens. Yeah, he's, he's almost got to bait his team, and that's where your slaughter needs to be hippie, so he can be the one that goes in first, dies, but at least tanks up some of the damage. Universe very close now. Looks like he will have the gold for it, and not going to save for buyback, just grabs it right away. Such an unfavorable Roche spawn for VP. Now the, the time has come for the lanes to be so pushed out that VP oh, has to defend, and they actually are at risk for getting picked. It's one of those moments where you're just like, oh, if only he knew that Roche is so close. But as you said, they are backing off now, and this last slider to grab the BKP of four staff, but really good play from Lil. Look at Lil's position. He's not like going up and attacking the creeps. He's just dumping his uh, Splinter Blast from as far away as possible. Blink Dagger at the ready to make sure that he does not give a free kill. If he gives up a free kill here, they pressure to T3. Immediately, VP have to TV back, and then EG gets Roche. It's super important that he does not get picked off right there. But EG are too scared to pressure that lane. They sit back, VP... We'll be the ones to scout it With first. his positioning, they're too scared. If he were likely creep and being careless, then yes. And I mean, just look at the dire vision. This is atrocious. One of the worst vision scenarios I've ever seen EG have, to be honest. They are totally bottled I up. I still cannot believe EG got wiped at that fight with the Aegis. That it was, was, it was I feel like it was almost entirely the nighttime as well as just he blinks onto the freshly yeah. unveiled BK from the bed. crazy. Bit of bad luck, really good execution by VP and... Really good positioning by yeah. them too. Like, hiding in trees like, oh, okay, smoke pop, oh, it was DC. I was like, what? wait, no, their supports are in this tree. What? No, my smoke popped over here. It was just an, a mess of confusion. Well, Roshan gets massacred. VP, grab it. And Illidan will be the man to claim the Aegis, so now you've got uh, a free swap initiation, and you'll come back for round two. Even if you go down, ready to rock and roll again. But now, EG, they have this uh, lineup where they don't have any defensive supports. Generally, you know, it's like a Dazzle, Winter Wyvern, even Undying, I would say, with a Soul Rip is decent. But if someone gets Blink stunned and they're not facing towards the Fountain, they're just dead. They're sieging, they're moving in, Illidan, uh, just right up on the high ground. Come at me, he says, and he's about to get another item here. The Mantis Stell deployed, just pops it right away. There's the crush. Doesn't really care, though. Illidan, very durable. He swaps Artesian, baits out the BKB, uses his own as G kites him a little bit. G has his own BKB. He's going to pop it fairly earlier. They have to get a kill while these BKBs are activated, or they're going to need to back out, and they jump onto PPD. Slow from the Ice Blast. The curse there on Universe to hold him in position. G's very tanky, although he has been shackled for now. And then Sumail locks him down, tries to finish him off, but there's the cheese to heal him back up. Kept alive for now. Artesian is finally going to go down. They've lost three for this. They need to spam those by as quick as possible. Illidan still has that extra life to work with. Comes back now, Sumail. Low on mana. Yet EG do hang on, but it cost them heavily. The buyback committed and multiple deaths there. That was they a won't sick lose the wreck yet. I will. Oh my goodness. On the BKB Slara with a Wind Ranger in range to proc the Desolator on him so he drops. That was crazy good. They still keep on sieging here. After it all, Fear jumps in, almost finished off immediately, and Illidan, he's just too tanky here with the Cold Embrace from the Wyvern again, negating almost all of uh, Sumail's damage. They charge forward onto Sumail. They're really committing for the Wind Ranger. They will manage to bring him down. Insta buyback. Lil heading on for ages. Arteezy, this could be a dieback here. He's got to get the hell out. It's Sumail who buys back as well. Does turn the fight. Brings down Illidan. Oh my goodness, G, this is not your base, my friends. <laughs> so far, so deep. He'll die as well, but everybody and their mother has committed a buyback at this point now. Wow, that was like. a sick Manta dodge from Vengeful Spirit. Fear blinks in, tries to go for the Hex on the Vengeful Spirit. It will then pops his Manta, and then Shadow Shaman is out in no man's lane without a PKB. That was crazy good by Virtus Pro with the plays. Bottom lane, Phobos taking a punish some punishment here, but he does Greaves up, continues to retreat. That's the Lotus Orb. So VP Ben, they wipe out four die, but EG had to blow the buybacks there and some pretty important heroes. So the end result of the fight was basically an even net worth exchange. It was like 110 gold discrepancy overall.
But EG hold the high ground. They get, they fight their way through the Aegis as well as the Cheese. They do not lose the tower or the Rex. Yet. VP almost take down the T3 and they kill Gyrocopter twice. That is just incredibly devastating. I think VP managed to spend their gold too before they died. We see Dragon Knight with the MKB already, and of course Ventral Spirit with Moving the on uh, mid. Sumail with the quick jump in here finds Phobos and deletes gem. Phobos. That's the gem as well. No. Big pick. The old man grabs it and he will scamper back. But what is Lil going to buy with his 3,300 Refresher? gold? Refresher is pretty good. It's, he saved, seems like he's saving for something pretty hefty here. I could have started to buy some components. Uh, anything else that comes to mind for you besides a refresher? Solar? I, it feels like they just don't want a solar crest. Yeah, solar I think would be might be better suited on the eventual spirit though. Or the AA, but AA is probably likely going to build a scepter next, so... Hex could also be decent, but I think Refresher is a little better because the the BKB Pierce. At the 40 minute mark now, just clipping it. You can take a look at the graph, and I, it does really tell the story of this game. About a 15,000 gold swing, and it all began with that one five man wipe. EG had all the confidence, the Aegis up on Sumail. Basically didn't get to do anything the entire fight. They lost the starter off the back and... They didn't drop a ward down during yeah. the fight too. You'll see that often like during a nighttime like smoke. Like right over here or something. Yeah, you, you want like... It, it, well, as soon as smoke house, boom, drop a ward and then you have vision of the supports that you need to blink on and kill immediately. Because they didn't have vision of the heroes that they needed to, they just lost that fight miserably. But, you, you know, you can, you can understand where they're coming from. They had a couple of smokes before and they're like, wow, okay, VP were positioned. If they weren't perfectly positioned, they would have just destroyed them in EG banked on that chance. Do you have a favorite here for late game now? With the way the game's developed, EP you... has better map control right now, and they can get the next Roche and then just throw their lives at EG while they have to waste buybacks on the side of evil geniuses. So They did lose their gem, though, and EG have managed to get some wards up. Yeah, I think they can buy another gem, though. It shouldn't have been cool should down be by now. Yeah. soon, or uh, it is, in fact, ready. And on top of that, they have like a Lotus Orb. If, like, God forbid, a Shackle reflects on a Sumail, that's gonna, that's just ownage because he's not gonna have BKB. It also takes off Amp, it takes off the Frostbite, um, I took off the Hex from Shadow Shaman. That's and here a, we go. That's actually really powerful. Another crucial fight. Let's get ready to rumble here. EG rotating down the bottom lane. Who gets the jump this time? Crush on the two off the bat. Universe engages, and the Shackle's there as well. And they didn't really match the combo, but now the back into the curse, trying to turn the fight, but it's Without the Dragonite, no buyback. Illidan low, they're scrambling on the retreat. It's EG who get the jump this time, and they want Lil too. Trapped in the trees, only a matter of time now with the shackle there. It's gonna be three heroes biting the dust. Their combo just did they lose too another late. gem, or that was that fierce? Gem? They I think it was fierce. Don't gem. think they no, they they didn't have one. That wow, that was I think Lil was actually far too slow on the cold embrace. You have to have the cold embrace on a stun into shackle target. First off, great jump by Sardar getting two heroes to let up lead to. A perfect shackle shot, but the Winter's Curse plus the Cold Embrace has to come out on the Dragonite immediately so that he can pop his BKB and then turn around on these heroes. So looks like VP do not have a buyback on the Dragonite, only going to have one on the Winter Wyvern, and his dreams of a refresher are going to be delayed. Uh, I guess in good news, he, he didn't get to use his ultimate, so should EG push and he gets back, he'll at least have it there. But EG aren't willing to push. They force out the one buyback, not the most devastating hero and it does slow down whatever Lil's next item is a bit though only 2500 gold now still nothing on the courier <laughs> like a Phobos with this casual ROB <laughs> we need armor guys <laughs> Valley. I, I mean, I mean it's, it's a slider game you know he needs armor and Vlad's is good yeah, they, they do have the Akil already but Vlad's eventually like you said in the works here it's a but slider the game solar? Why, why, you want solar plus AC plus Vlad's that is the I, I, on top of you know regular armor items on your heroes like Shiva's Guard and HOD, but there's uh, actually still no MKB on EG because Artizi died back, yeah. so he lost a ton of gold. And Sumail, he's close to that next damage item, but has not quite gotten there and doesn't really want to get caught without buyback. And he might want BKB instead. Yeah, he's really debating it right now, and uh, it is going to be a BKB. Yeah, so the, yeah, this would be like the the evasion is just incredibly good at this point in the game. So much value from that, but yeah, I don't I don't know if they're going to commit to that. I did see Lil pick up one item. Is that did he he spend his Who's gold this? on another gem? A little? Uh, yeah, that's the that's the second gem. So okay, yeah, they they need another gem. Gonna be on cooldown for, sure. for some time. This next Roshan is crucial. 
Definitely need to protect this one. They give another one away to EG and that map control battle. It's been tug of war all game. It may go back directly the other way. And EG has kind of uh, skated by the last five minutes where RT didn't have buyback. So that was like one of the most trying times for them in this game. A pair of illusions now. Gonna scout through the jungle a bit. See what's going on. See so Universe slowly working towards his Assault Caress. The Armor Wars continue in earnest here. He's gonna finish off a couple of Ancients en route. Yeah, but that's what happens when VP isn't perfectly positioned for a smoke from EG. Like, someone's gonna get caught with a stun and a shackle, and then it's up to it's up to Lil to kind of salvage the fight with Cold Embrace and Winter's Curse. And if he doesn't get a perfect one off, VP will get obliterated. It can go the other way if the Dragon Knight's the one that gets the jump, but he doesn't have that AoE lockdown the way... Uh... A Slardar does. Yeah, maybe they can get like a blink uh, vacuum wall too. But I feel like it's pretty dangerous to lead with your Dark Seer if you if you don't if you don't have vision mm. anyway. That's the team fight if you whiff it. Yeah, I mean at least you can maybe like throw up a Lotus Orb too. That's True. where the preparation comes in. You have to have time to pop these defensive spells. Oh, they have the Harpy Stormcrafter. That's actually a really big deal. That nighttime vision is OP, man. Oh, it's about to don't be. Don't let it die. <laughs> it's about to be dead as hell. <laughs> PPD says, "Get the hell out of my house!" and kills it off. So now Roshan, two minutes, maybe a minute and a half or so to go. They need to slay Arteezy's creep inside the Rosh pit so they don't know what, when it's up. They don't have that great of uh, ways to scout it out. Power shot is the best that they have, but that's not global. A, a proud, prized, regular range creep, but he's very buff. He's been working out. It's not been scouted just yet. VP swinging down towards the pit. You see them VP making the same play that they did also in... Also mobilizing. Uh, they will de ward here. They're gonna jump though, Sumail off the bat, the BKB has come out, but he got the two-hero jackal. Can he focus anyone? Bring them down, they are gonna curse. Committed onto Sumail, the Ice Blast coming through. Elodin taking a lot of damage here in the midst of the fight, but they do finish off the Wind Ranger, no buyback. And now G goes in and goes hard in the paint. The buyback comes down the slider, but they need that firepower from Sumail. They just don't have it, it's about to be four down. Buybacks, buybacks everywhere, you low PPD. Well, TP out. Okay. The Gyro and the Slard are committed. Lil made the plays that fight. He had the cold embrace on the Dragon Knight that guy shackled, and then he turned around with the Winner's Curse. He was prepared. He realized what he did wrong in the fight before and just completely outplayed EG. And EG just did the same initiation that they did before. They're like, well, it worked last time. It should work this time. But unfortunately, Roach is right about to respawn. So this EG is... can't fight without Wind Ranger. Uh, and dead for almost a minute here. This is a long death timer for Sumail. G nope. is just like unstoppable though during dragon look at his armor right now the guy's a 47 armor and on top of that you can't like, run he away shrugs, he, he laughs at amp damage at this point he crushes the bkb too yeah. like you get slowed you, who needs a scotty when you have dragon form slow and you have mkb so wind ranger can't use the bkb bkb wind run so that's an aegis she's going to the way of bp ideally you want one on the ventral spirit but maybe one of the supports will be kind enough to feed him a cheese uh yeah, it's delicious. Little Gouda, mozzarella. All right, back into the pit. VP are going for the Aegis, the Cheese as well. Looking to close out this game, or at least take that first lane of Rax. Amazing that we're almost 48 minutes in with a Shaman as well as a Dragonite, with eggs even up on the Shaman, and this DK, massive, and yet still been. Yet to see that first lane of Rax claim, what a load of tier three. But this could be the difference maker now. Aegis will be grabbed. They give it again to Illidan. The cheese more valuable on the dragon. Wait, how did he get there so fast? What in the heck? Huh? Didn't he just respawn? Um, no, no BOTs. I guess, yeah, I guess he ran must have TP'd in a walk. I, I, I did not think he'd be in there in time for the cheese. Or for the Aegis, rather. But ideally, you want cheese on Dragonite and Aegis on Ventral Sphere. But I thought it was going to switch around because he wasn't there. But this T3 is just is, is in the night range. Down the bottom lane. Round two. Let's see if this one's more successful here. Pipex entirely lacking for the Dire. Only the Crystal made it with one. And now the tier three goes down. Illidan proudly grabs the last hit. And now Sumail going to engage. Commits a shackle here. But G's ready for this. He turns onto the Wind Ranger. Back the hell away. And Illidan's kept alive again by the Cold of Race. There's the curse as well. Keep Keeping the fight going smoothly for BP so far, and now the Ice Blast come back! The wall! BP! They really found every last hero! PPD down! No buyback on the Gyro! It's turning into a massacre here in the Dire Base, the one buyback that is available. That's the Crystal Maiden, it will be used. BP playing it safe, playing it slow, a shackle attempted by Sumail, they're gonna jump back in, but now the DK comes in, he gets off the cheese, Universe likely to be next, down he goes as well, PPD crumbles, and Sumail runs, but he can't escape the wrath of G, he really kills them all in the end, and BP, an incredible comeback here, 
will take game wow. number one. That is a VP I have not seen in weeks. That was incredible. That was the VP at TI that, that just dominated when you least expect it. Took out Secret in the lower bracket. Impressive stuff, Ben. That was crazy good from them. Well, no, they've cast off the shackles of Virtus Throw now. Now they are Virtus Pro. And maybe take a page out of